in other words, he rejected the law. But he does it in the midst of all their assembly, their church. Assembly in Hebrew can mean church in English or can mean congregation. It literally means assembly. In, in Greek, ecclesia is church. Ecclesia is assembly. So before, and um, the word here in Hebrew is assembly. It can also mean congregation. Most texts will uh, uh, translate as congregation, but I don't think that's proper. Assembly or church. And now we come to the biggie of all the biggies. And you deal with men like fish of the sea, like creeping things, to rule over them, all of them. He takes up with a fish hook, the fishing imagery, the fish of the sea imagery, very strong in the New Testament. Fish hooks, you go to the Sea of Galilee and you get the Roman coin. He tells Peter to go to the Sea of Galilee. Jesus does to and put a fish hook in and come up with a fish and it's got the coin in its mouth. So Jesus doesn't have to touch the coin. It's The fish had the coin. I don't think that's historical material, but it's charming. Uh, but here's the fish of the sea. It's much more serious here, I think. And of course, Peter has a net full of fishes and it did not tear at the end of the Gospels and he's swimming in the Sea of Galilee, and I think he has 153 fishes in his net or something like that, yet it did not tear and something like this. Uh, a couple of the synoptics have a lot of imagery of fish, fishermen, sea, uh, fish hooks, taxes, etc. Here's the passage from uh, Habakkuk that has similar imagery. Catching them in a net and collecting them in a dragnet. That is why he sacrifices to his net. This is why he rejoices and celebrates and burns incense to his dragnet. His portion is fat and his eating is plenty. It's eating is very important here. Its interpretation called, it concerns the evil ones of the rulers of the Kiti who collect riches with all their booty like the fish of the sea. So there it is. Now the Romans take, take spoils, take plunder take booty. And they do it as uh, massive as the fish of the sea. As for what they said about sacrificing to a net, net, net and burning incense, Peshero. Its, it's interpretation is that they sacrifice to their standards and they worship their weapons of war. Now that is the clincher of all the clinchers for most people. Because that is the behavior of the Roman army. Who, who, who adored their standards because the Romans' bust was on, their emperor's bust was on the standards. And by that time he had been deified. This first century imperial Rome. And they worshiped their weapons war. When they took the temple, they stormed the temple, they stopped, faced the golden gate, and they sacrificed to their standards and they adored their weapons of war. It's in Josephus. Doesn't mean that's the only time. After every victory in Galilee, they would have done this. After every town they conquered. Since it's because of them, his portion is fat, his eating is plenty, his interpretation is that they parcel out their yoke and their taxes. They're tax farmers. They parcel out their taxes. To who? Groups like the Herodians and other petty kings of the people in the eastern part of the empire. All these parallels you can develop. I can't give you one. You say, well, where's the Maccabean? I can't give you any. If I could give you one, I'd do it. You say, well, what's wrong then here? Well, you don't read any books about the scrolls that interpret texts. All you, if you read anybody in the scrolls, all they do is talk about paleography, archaeology, and maybe now a little carbon testing, but they never interpret texts. Never. Because the texts don't bear out anything they say. These are peaceful essays here, by the way. They really sound peaceful. Okay. So now, these Kittim are tax farmers, parcel out their taxes. The Rhodians were the Roman tax collectors in Palestine. Later the rabbis became the Roman tax collectors, the patriarchs after the fall of the temple became the tax collectors for a while in Palestine. Anyway, consuming, literally eating or devouring all the peoples year by year, giving many countries over to the sword. The Seleucids gave many countries over to the sword. Not, not in my book. Therefore, the sword is always unsheathed. It's inter more about these Katim. Its interpretation concerns the Katim, who destroy many by the sword. Young men, grown ups, old people, women. I'm reading this because you'll never forget it if I read it out loud to you. 
you'll forget it if you read it to yourself. Young men, grown-ups, old people, women and children and have no pity even on the fruit of the womb. That's another killer. Why? Read what happened around the Sea of Galilee when the Romans took the towns around the Sea of Galilee before marching down to Jerusalem after Josephus had already surrendered to them and there were towns that wouldn't surrender and the Sea of Galilee ran red with the blood of the Galilean fishermen who were resisting them. And then they took a place east of Tiberias called Tarakai. And Tarakai and these other places, they, they, they took the young men, they, they, they took the able-bodied men and the women, and they killed all the old men and all the women who were pregnant, disemboweling them or killing their little children because they were no use on the slave market. And that's what they were doing. They were selling these people for slaves and for Roman games, birthday parties, as Josephus calls them, after the conquest to have them out there for a little killing uh, feast. One for uh, Titus was big on birthday parties, Josephus tells him. He had big celebrations after the fall of Jerusalem in Beirut and in another town along the Beirut coast before going back to Rome where he had a lot of prisoners, everyone, you know, uh, in the arena for uh, fun and games for the for his brother Domitian's birthday party. Yes, and but the key is that they have no pity even on the fruit of the womb. Josephus describes that that is what they do. They have no pity even on the fruit of the womb. And that is literally vivid testimony. Read Josephus around Galilee. So I don't accept the New Testament picture of all these peaceful times fishermen in Galilee. I think that's playing off of this. What happens in Galilee is terribly brutal stuff to the extent that, you know, thousands upon thousands, I'm not exaggerating, because he tells you, I think, that they divided up the, the prisoners uh, because the Herodian uh, Agrippa, too, he, it was, this was his province, he got 10,000 prisoners to dispose of in slave markets as he wanted to. And Nero took others uh, or the originally Nero, but the Vespasian, after Nero was killed, was doing other. But this Nero hadn't been killed yet. Nero took others through Vespasian to build the Corinth Canal in Greece, where Nero had his uh, summer palace in Corinth. He was building that big canal uh, between the Peloponnesus, which exists now. It's a big, huge cut in the ground if you've been there. Oh, uh, so anyway, he had no uh, pity even on the fruit of the womb. One little bit before we take a break. But I will stand upon my watchtower. This is that material we saw in 